So we're going to skip over BlockKit, uh, but BlockKit is actually this really cool UI framework where you can build these uh, message UIs without necessarily having to go in and code everything by hand. A BlockKit Builder is Slack's visual prototyping tool that you can use if you want to build more complicated integrations that aren't just, uh, you know, like a message comes in and we're going to respond with this message. We're, we're going to do a very simple integration today. Uh, we're not going to do something sort of visually interesting. Uh, but if you do want to do something like that in the future, I definitely recommend uh, checking out BlockKit Builder. It's this cool uh, interactive uh, product that gives you access to this framework so that you can actually see the code that's being generated by the UI that you're building in real time. So here's the anatomy of a Slack message. You can see there's a lot of different... Oh, I see John says BlockKit is awesome. Great. Love it. <laughs> Glad to have some backup on that. Um, so you can see that the um, that the Slack message is made up of different sections uh, separated by dividers. And then you can see that there's also these accessory uh, sort of like icons or pictures that you can add to a particular message. And then at the very bottom, you can see the green box uh, corresponds to an action. So there's different elements that a user can interact with if you want to get back some information from that user. So it, it's not just IRC, you know, here's some text. It can actually get uh, quite a bit more complicated and BlockKit definitely helps for that. So um, the, way that, the way that a user interacts with a bot over Slack is illustrated by this diagram here. And this diagram was actually not made by me. It is really uh, nice. And it was designed by my former colleague, uh, Tomomi Nomura, who is no longer at Slack and is now working at Microsoft. Um, but since she designed this for a presentation that we previously gave together about Slack and Watson, uh, I wanted to use it again, first of all, because it's beautiful, but I also wanted to give a shout out to her for the uh, amazing work that she put into this workshop, even though, of course, she's not giving it right now because she doesn't work at Slack anymore. <laughs> she works at Microsoft. But shout out to Tomomi. Uh, I will try to uh, paste her Twitter handle into the chat later. But basically, the user is going to send a message to Slack. So that's like type, 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 enter, bam, goes to Slack. And at that point, Slack triggers the app mention event. And so anything subscribed to the app mention event will get a ping. Uh, and so in this case, we have a bot that's subscribed. So Slack will send the payload to the request URL specified by the bot. The bot will think about it, do whatever it needs to do, and it will respond back with a post message, and then Slack will post the message back to the end user. So Slack is kind of operating as the hub here, right? It's sort of like a coordination hub. Oh, thank you, CFE, for pa pasting uh, Tomomi's Twitter. Tomomi is, I mean, if you have to choose between me and Tomomi for people to follow on Twitter, it's Tomomi every day of the week. Not just because it's more technically accurate, but she posts amazing pictures of her cats, like her cats, other people's cats, drawings of cats. Uh, she has like the, the whole HTTP status code thing um, illustrated with cats. <laughs> <laughs> so like 404 cat not found definitely recommend um, checking out Tomomi's Twitter. Thank you. Thank you for that. So um, so this is just how a user will interact with a bot through Slack. Slack is kind of the hub. The way that a user will interact with a Watson powered bot is you can see it's actually the same the same sort of start and the same end. but right there in the middle after the bot gets the request URL, you can see that it's going to extract some information from that and send it over to Watson. It's going to say, hey, I got this message. I'm just a bot. Don't know how to respond to it. I need an intelligent answer to this question or message. And then Watson will be able to use either a custom machine learning model, or in this case, we're just going to use a very, very basic customer service uh, skill that's already been trained. It's going to process that and return a result to the bot. And then the bot is going to return it to Slack and then Slack is going to return it to the user. I see Elaine says, here for the cats. Elaine, I have to break it to you. I have close to zero cats in this presentation. I hope you're not disappointed, but I hope that Tomomi's Twitter will <laughs> keep you satiated for the next few minutes. <laughs> So this is how we're this is how we're going to add Watson into this integration. Now previously, 
the way that we did this is we actually had a glitch uh, project and glitch is this really cool system. If you haven't used it before, if you have used it before, you know, you, you know how cool it is, but it basically is sort of like a combination of a GitHub repo and a hosting environment and also a sharing environment. So you can take someone's project, their code, and you can actually re remix it um, and use it yourself and then edit it and it'll actually be hosted and deployed automatically. So there is a glitch repo. If you click on the um, call to action down there at the bottom, you'll, you can get access to that. Uh, I believe I have it under like optional or, you know, extra steps. Um, and, and so you can actually get some code that will create this bot. In this lab, what we're gonna do is we're going to follow the instructions to make a, uh, an integration between Slack and Watson a little more tightly coupled using the Slack Watson integration. Thank <laughs> you.